Um, my name is Nick Evans and I run KZN Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. I became interested in snakes when I was about three or four years old. Yeah, I started watching Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter, and I thought he was awesome. So I wanted to be like him. <laughs> Um, and so yeah, I was from about then and ever since I started watching his shows, that's when I yeah, became really interested in snakes. I spent my whole life trying to help conserve them. So uh, I'm kept very busy with snake removal. So when someone has an unwanted snake in their property, they phone me. I go and take it away and put it back in the bush. And I also do snake awareness presentations at schools, uh, companies, communities, um, just to try and help people understand snakes a bit better. Um, and I'm also involved in a little bit of research. I do frog surveys, chameleon surveys, uh, and anything with reptiles. Yeah. So with most species, I just capture them and then I go and release them in a nearby reserve. But with black mambas and green mambas, and we were doing Mozambique spitting cobras, I'll collect DNA, I'll weigh them, measure them. Um, as I say, take the DNA, sex them, and then release them as well. With black mambas in certain valleys, uh, I microchip them, put an ID, I give them their own ID number, and uh, yeah, release them. If they're not looking too good, if they're unhealthy or they're, if they're injured, I'll take them to a facility that will give them the correct treatments. Um, and once they're a lot better, we'll release them again. Well, in Durban, we have a lot of people and a lot of snakes, and natural areas are getting smaller and smaller, and so the snakes have little option but to come into human households. and I don't know if it's just Durban, but humans can be quite messy. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of rubbish around human houses, and when there's rubbish, it brings in the rats, and when there's rats, the snakes come. So a lot of people just attract them. You know, there's a lot of people that keep rabbits and chickens and, and all sorts of small animals, and that attracts snakes as well. It's free caged food, so we can't really blame the snakes. I've got it on record how many snakes I rescue um, per year per year for the most part. It, it all depends on the weather. So obviously in summer we get a lot more calls. Um, so it can rescue anywhere between 10 and 20, five, maybe five and 20 in a week, depending on the weather. If it's cool, then not so many. Uh, the snake I most often call for is a spotted bush snake, a harmless snake. It's, it, it, it's green, so everyone thinks it's a green mamba. Um, so it causes a lot of panic and I just usually tell people to leave them alone. Um, and then we do get a lot of venomous snake calls. I'd say maybe 40-50% are venomous snakes. So usually the night adder, which is not highly venomous. Um, followed by this summer, this past summer, it, there's been a lot more black mambas in Mozambique spitting cobras. But usually it's the opposite way around. There's usually a lot more cobras in mambas. Um, but the nice thing with mambas is they're active all year round, which isn't nice for people in Durban, unless they like snakes. But for someone that likes black mambas, there's black mambas in summer and winter is the mating season for them. So they're, they're all year round. Yeah. Venomous snakes, like the black mamba, they eat a lot of rodents, which is obviously good for people. And many of the black mambas I catch on areas or in a room that is filled with rats. Um, so they're there to do a good job. Here in this valley we're actually filming in, there's a lot of dassies, the hyrax, and mambas control their populations. I had a call this week for one eating a dassie on someone's sun deck. Um, so they do control a lot of different animal numbers. Like the, the spits and cobras eat frogs mostly, so they control their numbers. And yeah, they've got a job to do in the environment, like, like all snakes. Yeah, sometimes I do get scared. Um, I think most of the time it's more the people. <laughs> Uh, last week I had to go where there were a lot of drunk people. They were quite... I'd rather l try and catch a mamba than a drunk person. Um, uh, but yeah, sometimes, it, you, like I've been in ceilings with mambas when it's hot and you've got to chase them and it's you're in small space, you can't move much, you've got to balance on beams, otherwise you fall through the roof. Um, I've been scared then, I've been scared catching mambas up in trees. Um, so yeah, I think it's good to have some fear. Um, Depends on the situation, yeah. Well, yes, I have been bitten. I've had four dry bites. Yes, yeah, so such wood. <laughs> it stays like that. Um, but they weren't while rescuing snakes. They were with captive snakes. So I think maybe I just got a bit slack. And twice, actually, it was while photographing snakes. So 
you can't multitask. Well, it's hard to multitask. Photograph and handle the snake same time. It can be dangerous. So I've learned some lessons. <laughs> and then once uh, I had a call for a black mamba in somebody's car. And the guys there, they got spears and stabbed it through the open window. And when I eventually pulled the snake out, it, was, it went into the dashboard. They saw the holes in the body. And they could see, you could see the lung inflating and deflating. And they actually felt really bad. And I'll show them, because I've learned, you know, when somebody kills a snake, you can't call them stupid, you can't call them names. So I showed them why it was wrong. And they could see they actually felt really, really bad. And I took it to the vets to get treated. They stitched it up. And every day the guys would phone me to say, how's our snake doing? You know, that was, that was one of the more memorable ones. Unfortunately, the snake did die after about two weeks, got infection. Um, but it, it taught them a good lesson and now they call me, they don't kill the snake, so that was good. Yeah, yeah. If, if you want to follow my work, you can follow my Facebook page, KwaZulu Natal Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, or you can follow me on Instagram, Nick Evans KZN.